how do you draw the isomers of bromopentane? Now, there are going to be eight of them. I'm going to show you my method for doing something like this. Step one, first find all the isomers of your carbon backbone. For us, it's pentane. I'm going to start with regular pentane. That's the only way to connect them end to end, right? But pentane itself is an isomer of a shorter butane chain with a methyl group on it. Five carbons in a row. What if it was only four carbons in a row and then we had the extra carbon as a branch? Well, that's a possibility. Is there anywhere else we could put that branch that would give us a different isomer of the carbon backbone? No. If we put it here, we would have just done them all end to end, which is the same as this molecule. If we did it here, that's the same as putting it here, but flipped. And if we put it here, again, it's end to end. So it's just pentane again. So this is the only butane isomer that's five carbons long. But what if it was only three carbons long and then we had two methanes sticking out of the same carbon? That's also an isomer of pentane. But you're here for bromopentane. So now the question is, where are the unique places on each molecule that we could put the bromo? Well, I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to do this in uh, green. Okay. Step one, I'm going to draw a bromine on carbon one of the first pentane there. That's one bromo pentane. And now I'm going to redraw pentane and say, well, could I put bromine on the next atom over? Yes, I could. That's two bromo pentane. Now I'm going to redraw pentane and be like, can I put bromine on the next carbon over? Yes, and that's also a distinct molecule. Can I put bromine on the fourth carbon over? Well, yeah, but that's the same as doing it from the one to the second carbon over, just from the other side. So if I put the bromine here, it gives me the same molecule as this gives me here. And if I put bromine on the fifth carbon, that's the exact same as if I had to put it on the first carbon. So these are the only uh, isomers of bromopentane that have a five carbon chain in them. Where are the distinct places that I can put bromine on this molecule? Well, if I put it on the first carbon, yeah, that's a possibility. Let me redraw the backbone of that molecule for you. Could I put bromine on this atom? Yes, there is room for it. And that is definitely different, a different place to connect it than there. Could I put the bromine on the next carbon over? Well, yes, that's also a possibility. And it's also different from any of the others. Could I put bromine on the next carbon over? Well, actually, yes. And that gives you an even more different molecule. Connecting it to this carbon versus that carbon is different because of the relative placement of the extra methyl group. So here we have 1-bromo-2-methylbutane, 2-bromo-2-methylbutane, 2-bromo-3-methylbutane, uh, and 1-bromo-3-methylbutane. Cool, cool. Now, where are the distinct places on this molecule that we can put the bromine? Well, we could connect it to one of the branches. If I connected it to this branch, it might as well have just been that branch, and that branch is the same, and that branch is the same, and there's no room for it on the center because the center already has four bonds. So there's only one possibility to put the bromine on this molecule. It's 1-bromo-2-2-dimethylpropane. Cool. And actually, this is eight, which is what I promised you there would be. So again, if you're asked to draw the isomers of um, a carbon chain that has a substituent, I want you to first figure out all the isomers of just the carbon chain. Bam, bam, bam. Then you can reproduce them ad nauseum and put the substituents in various places until you've exhausted all your possibilities. Now, the last thing I want to point out is that if you were asked for stereo isomers, then you have to worry about which of these are chiral or not. Um, the only ones here that are chiral are this one, um, not that one, not that, wait, one, two, three, this one, 
one, two, this one, and this one. I believe those are the only chiral ones here, which means there's an R and S isomer for this, an R and an S for that, an R and an S for that, an R and an S for that, which means there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. If you're in count, if you're including all the stereoisomers R and S for all the chiral compounds here. Anyways, that's just an if. If you came here looking for that, I wanted to give it to you. So here you are, and uh, best of luck.